Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. <laughs> ah, okay. For me, it's good morning. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, welcome, everybody. And thank you so much for attending today's session, uh, which is about the new Project DPRO practitioner qualification. Um, today, I'm going to take you through all the details that you need to know uh, and help you to understand the difference between the practitioner qualification and the level two qualification, which we had previously. Uh, so we're going to find all about um, what the exam is. Uh, how to register for it, and also the activities that you need to undertake in order to attain your uh, Project DPRO practitioner qualification. If there are any questions, um, please just ask. Um, what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about why PM for NGOs changed over to a practitioner qualification. Well, we at PM for NGOs are very big on continuous pre professional development. Um, previously, as I'm sure many of you know, the level two qualification, which the practitioner is replacing, was just an exam. Uh, and exams are fine, but they are a test of knowledge. And what we wanted to do was give um, people who use Project DPRO the opportunity to demonstrate their continue, continuous professional development in the field of project management in the development sector. Uh, and so for that reason, we have changed the system over. And all of the activities that you need to undertake in order to become a practitioner can be grouped uh, into three different titles. Um, professional development through competency-based courses. All of these courses can be found on DPRO Plus. Informal learning and giving back to the development sector and the project management industry. The idea is that once you have completed your foundation and you decide that you wish to attain the qualification, you register and then you have one year to complete all of the necessary activities. And because it's continuous professional development, you will be refreshing uh, your, your activity logs and your experience every three years on top of that as well. So right now we have the foundation and the practitioner levels of Project DPRO. Previously, we had level one and level two. The foundation level is the same as previously. It's a knowledge-based exam, which I know that you all, because that's the, one of the criteria for registering for today's session. So you are all currently holders of the foundation certificate that previously was level one. Uh, the practitioner is the previous level two, but as we know from now on, uh, it's a, a, a continuous professional development based certi certification. Um, at the moment, Program DPRO just has the foundation level, which replaces level one. Uh, in the future, we will be introducing the practitioner qualification for Program DPRO as well. So, how do we go about attaining the practitioner qualification? Well, these are the steps involved. First of all, the prerequisite is the foundation. So if you have the foundation, or even if your certificate says um, PMD Pro level one, that's fine. That's the prerequisite that you need in order to be able to register for the practitioner qualification. So then you would register and you would download the activity log, which is the space where you tell us all about the continuous professional development activities which you have undertaken. 
you would perform those activities and record them in the log. And then finally, when you were ready, with a maximum of one year from registration, you would submit your activity log and then we would, uh, we would grade it and we would let you know the results. So those are the simple steps involved. <laughs> First of all, to register for the exam, you can do that. You can do all of these steps via the DPRO Plus website. I hope you all uh, are registered on DPRO Plus. If not, please do so. Uh, but on the DPRO Plus website, there is a specific section for the Project DPRO Practitioner Qualification. And then there is a subheading uh, which takes you to the pm for ngos exam system. And when you reach that page, you will be able to register, you will be able to book an exam and pay for an exam and also register and download your activity log. So all of these steps uh, can be taken via the DPRO Plus website. Uh, and that's really your base camp for, for attaining the practitioner qualification. <clears throat> Okay, and as we spoke about previously, there are a number of activities uh, that you are required to do, all based on continuous professional development, uh, in order to become a DPRO practitioner. The three group groups that we saw before uh, were professional development, um, mini courses, which can be taken through DPRO Plus. Uh, and then our, there are six informal learning activities and four giving back activities. And we're going to go through each of those categories, uh, one by one and step by step. So those of you who have engaged with DPRO Plus and have already taken some mini courses on the system, will know that we have 36 mini courses and each one of those mini courses relates to one of the competencies of uh, Project uh, DPRO and Program DPRO. So there are many to take, uh, in order to attain the practitioner qualification, you need to take six after you register for the examination process. Take six mini courses. And when you're deciding which mini course to take, it's an idea to actually take the competencies assessment first. To on, again, on the DPRO Plus system, uh, there is a competencies assessment which allows you to analyze exactly it, the areas where you might need to strengthen, uh, the areas where you're already very strong. And it would be a good idea to take the competencies assessment and then identify those areas where you think you need a little bit more training, a little bit more attention, and take the uh, mini courses uh, relevant to those competencies. So for those of you who have not already been on the DPRO Plus system, this is what it looks like. On DPRO Plus, if you go to courses and then courses and activities, you will see the 36 different competency courses there ready for you to uh, take and register. You can take them whenever you like. Um, they are asynchronous, which means uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you don't have to register and then wait for the course to open. You can just take them. And um, each one of those courses should take around four to six hours to complete. There are various videos and articles to read and watch. And then finally, there's always um, an activity which you perform and you submit, a, a writing-based activity. Okay, so now if we move on to the informal learning activities, you will see that there are six. The first two are to attend a relevant webinar. There are a number of webinars hosted by pm for ngos uh, either on the DPRO Plus website or on the main pm for ngos website. Uh, you can attend, identify and attend two of those, or you can... Uh, attend webinars from another relevant organization uh, to do with project management 
or in the development sector. That's left a little bit open for candidates to decide. Uh, but two webinars is the first criteria. And then you have a book review. So a project management book, um, you need to read it and then you need to submit a review. And one of the things that we do is we can publish those reviews on the website that can help other candidates uh, decide which books they want to read in the future as part of their as part of their assessment. Um, and then also you would submit two reviews of project management articles. And again, uh, if you review an article and it's an excellent article, then this allows us to uh, to identify those articles and to inform other candidates uh, exactly which articles uh, are a good read and will help them with their continuous professional development. Um, and so finally, we have what we call a free choice activity, and that could be a number of things. It could be um, a mentoring exercise being mentored by somebody with more experience, or it could be attending a work event or uh, another organizational course. And all of those things can be logged on the activity log with the relevant details. So you see that in the second section, informal learning, there are six activities which you need to complete in total. If we move on to the final section, the giving back section, there are another four activities which you need to perform in order to finally secure your practitioner qualification. The first one is to share a tool or a process which you have developed uh, while you've been working as project managers. Obviously, the practitioner qualification uh, is a demonstration that you have taken the knowledge during the foundation certificate and have applied that in your field. And when you do that, you will, um, you will design tools or processes um, for your own particular needs and your own organization, depending on its context. So um, you can share with those with us uh, and that will demonstrate how you have, uh, have implemented your project management knowledge in your particular field and your particular context. Uh, and then also um, you will submit, submit a, a case study. It, that could be either uh, an article or a video. And again, the case study will be uh, relevant to your particular organization, the projects that you are engaging with uh, in your day-to-day -day business. Uh, and again, that content will uh, allow other um, PMD Pro practitioners and found foundation level holders to actually learn more about uh, the types of projects that uh, practitioners are engaging with on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then finally, in the giving back section, uh, we have two more free choice activities. Uh, and this could be helping peers. Uh, it could be mentoring other people who have less experience than, or it could be, for example, giving a presentation to, um, to a local body or another project management organization. Um, so those four act giving back activities, they complete the list of tasks uh, that practitioners need to complete in order to gain their qualification. So how does it work? Well, um, this is just a screenshot of one of the activity log pages, uh, the one that is relevant to sharing a tool or a process. Uh, and I just wanted to share this with you so you could see the type of information um, that you need to provide for all of these activities we have spoken about. So uh, you can see that relevant to the sharing a tool, uh, you will need to describe uh, the context of the, the project uh, in which you applied this tool, and then talk about how you developed the tool, and then talk about how the tool helped the project. So the activity log has a page for each of these activities we've spoken about in each of the three sections. Uh, and as you go along, as you complete the activities, put the information in the activity log. And then once the activity log is complete, then you could submit it to us and you will receive your practitioner qualification.
Well, everyone, that's the end of the, the presentation. I'm sure um, people have questions. If you'd like to ask those questions um, now, I'm just having a look at the, the chat um, to have a look at Hello, some of the questions. I've been, I've been monitoring the chat and, and I took note of a few questions yes. that have been, have been coming through oh. your presentation. Okay, so I, Edson, I'll just run through some of the ones that I see in the chat. Um, do you need to complete all activities or choose one from each section? Um, the activities that we that we showed, you need to complete all of them. So there were six mini courses, uh, there were six activities in the second section, and then finally the giving back section. There were four activities. So in total, uh, that's sixteen activities. Okay. Um, and the same, uh, the same response to Nazmul as well, um, that there are 16 activities in total. So um, the, there really isn't a minimum or a maximum. Uh, you just need to complete the activity log with the details of those 16 activities. And then when that is full and complete, then you can submit your log. Okay, now the cost of the exam. Maybe, Edson, maybe you would like to uh, like to share the costs of the exam. Yes, I mean, I was just uh, typing the PMD Pro Plus link. I'll share that in the chat in a minute. Uh, the cost for the PMD Pro, uh, the Project Pro Practitioner exam is $150. Um, so this is the price that is paid uh, directly to pm for angels for the whole week, the entire process uh, of invigilating and checking the activity logs and providing your feedback. And, and I would like to connect that answer, Oliver, with the question that many made on, uh, on ask on the beginning. He was asking what's the difference between um, the prediction examination um, on PMD Pro Plus or with PM for NGOs and doing that with training partners. Uh, it's really important that uh, uh, candidates understand that we are providing mini courses, we are providing guidance, uh, book recommendations, uh, resources at the PMD Pro Plus so they can uh, access them and take everything and it's free. Uh, 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 the access to PMD Pro Plus is free for anyone who is foundation certified. However, uh, there is no mentoring process in this sense. So when you decide to take your uh, exam, your prediction examination by yourself, uh, directly on PMD Pro Plus, you have access to the resources. Of course, we will answer questions we will uh, uh, guide you on, give you directions on how to get uh, a webinar or a mini course or a book, but there is no individual mentoring. That's the major difference when you look at the, the, the training partners, for example. Training partners, uh, we already have a, a few training partners providing the prediction examination. And they do not only provide you access to materials, but they usually mentor you through the entire process. So basically, maybe this is the, the main difference between taking it by yourself or taking it for training partner. Thank you. And uh, I see other questions here. Um, are all those activities of the three sections are minimum or maximum? They are the exactly number of activities, Nasmo. When you download the activity log, there is a, a support guidance PDF that uh, guide you through each activity. The very first uh, version of the activity log was actually giving candidates more options. So we had more activities than it was presented today with options to take three of one, two of the other. And, and during the pilot, many candidates found that a little bit uh, complicated because you, you select different activities. You didn't know if you already completed the minimum and the maximum. So now the activity log is straightforward. You will follow it slide by slide or page by page and complete all the, all the, the, um, the activities. Okay, thank you, Edson. Uh, I see another question in the chat as well. Uh, does the completion date for all these activities depend on the date you have registered or is there a non-flexible schedule? Um, it depends on the date you registered. So if you register today, 
then you will have one year from today. But if you don't register for the exam for two months, then you will have uh, a year from the point when you register. Uh, there is a question, is it free of course for who passed the Project Pro Foundation exam? The access to Project Pro Plus, which is the platform where you can find resources, talk to other project managers, download tools, that's free. But the practitioner has its own cost, like I said, it's $150. And uh, we don't have different price for the practitioner for different candidates. So the foundation will have three different tiers of pricing, uh, depending on what you work, uh, where you work, where you're based. For the particular one is a flat fee. It's one fee, 150. Mohammed is asking uh, Oliver, how can we document and provide evidence to some activities such as attending the webinar? Mohammed, when you're filling out the activity log, you will fill out uh, all the information regarding the webinar, like the link that you use to access the webinar, uh, what was the date, who's the presenter. What is important to us is uh, not providing like a recording of the webinar, but we will notice the activity log is not just saying that you attended a webinar of read a book. Each activity requests you to write about it. So what have you learned from that webinar? What have you, how gonna be using that knowledge in your work? So it's much more important to us that we, uh, as invigilators, read how you're gonna be using that information than the, 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 the link or the recording itself regarding a webinar, for example. Okay, thank you, Edson. Um, so yes, to Abdullah, um, the process, I put the process there. Uh, again, so firstly, you need to take the foundation exam It is the, the prerequisite requirement and then you register. When you register, you will be able to download the activity log. And so once you have the activity log saved to your computer or your local files, then you can then begin to add the details of all the activities which you are performing to the log. And then, of course, the final step in the process is to actually submit the log for its verification and review by ourselves. Elise is asking that uh, I did not get well the, the advantage of taking this course with a partner. That depends on the candidate profile release. Some candidates, they, are, uh, they prefer to, do, um, to take the courses and do everything in their own pace and by their own. So a candidate would be accessing the PMD process and create their own learning schedule, search for webinars on the internet, read the book that they select. So in this case, you can take it directly with PM for interest. But some candidates prefer to be mentor, prefer someone that creates a schedule with them, um, provide the webinar itself, um, uh, recommend the books that you're gonna be reading. So the advantage on taking that with uh, a training partner is just because you're actually going to be mentored by the training partner. I would say that less experienced project managers would definitely prefer to do that to a partner because when you get to the point when you're giving back, for example, developing a tool or even making a presentation to your colleagues and peers, having that mentoring process would be helpful. But again, this depends only on your profile. It's a decision that's entirely up to you. Okay, thank you. Another question in the chat there. Uh, I had Project Depro certificate uh, a year ago. Is, is it still valid? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, if you had the uh, level one certificate, that would now be the foundation certificate. And uh, the level two would be the practitioner. But uh, your certificate that you took a year ago is still valid. And yes, the, the activity log is the only thing that you need to complete. There is no additional exam on top of the activity log. It is uh, just the log itself with all of the continuous professional development activities. Uh, um, completing the, the answer to that question, Oliver, and actually connecting to a question that was uh, shared previously, uh, it was asked, what is the significant application of this certification for the sector? So when you take the foundation exam, 
you take a 75 questions exam, and that's an evidence that you have read the guide, that you know the methodology, that you get in contact with the methodology. It doesn't actually, it's not an evidence that you are using it or that you have experience with that. So that's the foundation. That's why the foundation is lifetime valid. That, that's why it doesn't have an expiration because it's an evidence that you know the methodology, you know what it is. The practitioner gives you as a professional a different evidence. It's an evidence that you are continuing learning and dedicating some time to study, to give back, to create tools, to go through many courses, to share with your peers, to share with the sector. So that's a different level of evidence. So if let's say that you're talking to your employer or potential employer or your colleagues and they ask what's the difference, the difference that practitioner uh, approves that I've been studying and taking uh, several steps to improve my skills and my knowledge over the years. And that's why it's, it expires in three years. So every three years, you need to go through the process again so you can uh, refresh all your knowledge and your skills. And please remember, the idea is not that you're taking many courses and you're getting all the knowledge there. By being on PMD Pro Plus, by being on the, Pro, on, the Pro, on the Pro Plus platform, what we expect is that we learn from each other. It's a creating a community of practice, create a community of learning. One person reads a book and posts a a comment about that book that helped others to decide to read or not to read that book. Same with webinars. Uh, the mini courses are interactive. So we are trying to create a community of practice and provide you an evidence that you can show uh, on your curriculum, on your work, that you are continuing studying and improving your knowledge. Okay, thank you, Edson. We, we have a, a couple more questions in, in the chat, and I think it would be good to, to deal with them together. So the first question uh, would be, when would be a good time to enroll and continue learning? Uh, and then the second question, um, in my ongoing business, uh, I don't have so much time, so I'm not sure that I will complete the course within a year. May I extend the course? Um, Okay, if we deal with both of those questions at the same time, really a, a good time to register is, is whenever. But obviously, if you have some free time um, in order to perform some of the activities, then, then that is the perfect opportunity. In terms of the difference between studying for an exam, as with the old level two qualification, and this new process, well, I, I think there is a difference. Um, when you're taking an exam, usually you have to block off um, a time period to, to cram for the exam, to, to read and reread the guide and to make sure that you're prepared, take the, the, the sample test, etc. And that can demand quite a lot of hours within a fairly short time period, let's say within the block of a month. But I think that one of the advantages of this uh, new practitioner system is that you really can just devote an hour or two hours every week and by the end of the, the, the year, you should certainly have um, performed enough activities in order to, to gain your certificate. So um, it, it's, it's really not a case of just having this, um, this cramming situation where you are performing lots of hours within a short space of time. And I think that that is the, really the beauty of the practitioner exam. You really can just devote an hour or two hours a week. And that really should be enough over the space of a year uh, in order to perform all the activities you need to perform for the qualification. Uh, I see a really interesting question um, from Kazi Alon. Uh, but before I'm going to answer the question from Nasmu, uh, he's asking, can I register directly or need to register through the organization where I'm working? Uh, you can register directly to PM for NGOs, and you can only register through your organization if your organization is a partner of PM for NGOs, either a training partner or a non-profit partner. So you can check with your organizations so there is an official partnership with PM for NGOs. Otherwise, you need to register uh, directly. Um, and asking and answering in case alone, um, is there an equivalent practitioner certificate by other organizations? It's not the same, but it's similar to it. PMI does it with the PDUs. So once you get your PMP certification, for example, you have to renew it. You have to provide evidence that you've been studying uh, through the year and you have to renew it every year. 
Uh, our model is a little bit different. Of course, we learn from those process. We, we took those process to understand them. Uh, and, of, and, and one of the major difference, for example, is uh, on PMI, you need to renew every year. Uh, and I remember that uh, uh, Nguyen was saying that uh, uh, um, it's really difficult to complete the course in one year. Well, it's not a course, it's a series of activities. Uh, it might demand you a little bit of effort on your first year, but I can assure you, those are not activities that are gonna take your whole day. It's gonna take a few hours, like Oliver said. And once you achieve your practitioner, you only have to renew after three years. And we will be contacting all current practitioners, giving them opportunity to do that really in a small, slow pace through the three years. The uh, frequent question asks uh, questions uh, uh, is on the PMB Pro Plus as well. And if you do not find your answer there, I would uh, motivate, I would uh, 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 ask you to, to drop your question at the PMD Pro Plus because that help us uh, to actually include on the frequent questions uh, and to also help other people who might have the same, the same question. Um, yes, Save the Children is an official partner of uh, PM for NGOs. Uh, and yes, you can contact your focus point in your country or um, the team that is ahead of the examination at Save the Children and let them know that you are interested in taking the prediction examination. Abdullah, um, commenting your question. So if you are in the private sector and you would like to migrate to the nonprofit sector, uh, going through the practitioner examination might be a good solution. Uh, remember, that's why we give one year for the activities because you can do it slowly. It's a, a learning process as well for the ones who are beginning on the project management or nonprofit sector. The mini courses will help you to better understand the sector. You'll be accessing webinar, books, and you will have support. Maybe in your case, I would recommend doing that with a training partner. Since you are not familiar with the sector, having someone to mentor you would be better. And then later on, you can do it by yourself to be new. I think it's important to mention that um, you don't have to take the full year in order to complete your activity log. If, if you wish to move at a, a faster rate, and I know some people do prefer to do that, uh, then that is certainly possible as well. Uh, as soon as your activity log is completed, you can submit it. Good point, good point, Oliver. Um, some candidates are able to finish their set of activities within weeks or, or just a couple of months. Uh, uh, although you have to remember that the activities that are accepted are the ones that you uh, take after you resist. So you cannot submit a book that you read a couple of years ago. You need to read a new book. Or we will be flexible if you just finished reading the book last month, let's say. But that, uh, but not something that you did in the past. Elisa is asking, what's the advantage to register to a partner organization instead of registering on your own? Like I explained before, Liz, it depends on your profile, but take this example that uh, Abdullah was saying. He is from the private sector, so he doesn't have uh, much access to information or experience uh, on the nonprofit sector. By doing a registration through a training partner, for example, uh, it will allow him to be mentored and guided and learning from others that would be involved in the same process with the training partner. Doing the registration through PM for NGOs, we will provide you guidance and links, but we will not be able to provide individual mentoring. So through a training partner, you might have a more uh, a specific and individual support from them. In the end, it's up to you. Oh, is just saying, if I, if when I'm enrolled, is there any system to track me and give me reminder? You have the activity log and you have to track and remind yourself. 
So this is one other difference when you do it with a training partner, for example. A training partner would be mentoring you, having sessions with you. Each training partner has the liberty, autonomy to develop the mentoring process as they would like to. So I would say talk to the training partners of PM for a joint check, how their process are. And definitely some of them would have like a system to track you and mentor you. But if you're doing by yourself, you're doing by yourself. Okay. Um, Edson, there was, there was uh, an issue with somebody's uh, logging in, trying to log in with my email on Depro Plus and it's saying my email is not recognized. Oh, that's a different registration, Noah. If you never accessed the PD Pro Plus before, you need to register and send your certificate. Then we will grant you access. It's not an automatic, uh, uh, those are different uh, platforms and systems. So if it's your first time accessing the Depro Plus, there is a button to register. And when you will fill out a small uh, uh, form with your name, uh, country, and then you will attach uh, uh, your certificate and we'll grant you access. Now is a really good time to register on the uh, DPRO Plus system if you, if you haven't previously. And there you can actually take a look at the mini courses and, and see, for example, the activities involved in, in completing each one of those courses. Uh, and you can take some practice courses as well and, and, and of all those uh, tools uh, and knowledge is available uh, on DPRO Plus. Kazi is also asking uh, how to compromise, how is the cost to get a support from the training? That, Kazi, we do not know. Uh, all, all, all PM for NGOs training partners are independent organizations. Um, and uh, they would offer different services, different level of mentoring, different level of support. So they are free to decide what is their fee depending on what they offer. Uh, there is a directory at the PM for NGOs website that you can see all the training partners there per country. And it is, you, you will see which ones offer the practitioner or which ones only offer the foundation. And uh, our suggestion is that you contact them. You look at uh, the, well, nowadays country localization is not uh, a, a really important unless there is any language barrier because everything is online, but you might prefer to take some courses or some support uh, from a partner that is closer to you, uh, but it's up to you to look at the, the directory and select one of the partners and contact them. Uh, Abdullah, the activity log at this moment is uh, offered in English, but if you have a special requirement on filling it out, let's say in French, Spanish, Portuguese, or Arabic, which are uh, the core languages of PM for NGOs, you can just let us know and we will accept that you fill it out in your own language if it's uh, within the core languages of PM for NGOs. So again, English, Portuguese, Spanish, French, and Arabic, and anytime soon, Chinese as well. Okay, it's an excellent question from Mohammed. Uh, are there any clear criteria for passing and failing? Uh, and how much time uh, will it take the verification of the log after submitting it? Um, the verification criteria, well, this would depend upon the type of activity that you are submitting. Each mini course has uh, an activity that you perform at the mini course, and there is a rubric um, showing you exactly what you need to do in order to uh, pass the course itself. Uh, in terms of the other activities, the giving back activities uh, and the informal learning activities, really the information that you are providing uh, is what demonstrates that you have, have undertaken those acti activities well, that you have learned um, or, or taken on board the information that was in, for example, an article. Um, and, and, and so, the, the, the activity log would, would be the criteria itself, that you're filling in those fields, you're filling in those fields with all of the relevant information. And there is an accompanying guide to go with the activity log, which gives lots more information about exactly what you need to be uh, entering into each of the fields. 
Yes, Oliver. And uh, if you are already at the PMD Pro Plus, you can download the actual activity log and its guidance and look at one by one to see what is the criteria for each of the activities. In the end, if you submit your activity log and uh, the invigilator says that you did not pass, you have a chance to resubmit once, which means that, of course, the, the invigilator will not send it back to you and just say, you didn't pass. It will say, you didn't pass because that activity is not clear, because that activity is not according to our guidance, and you have the chance to uh, uh, a counter answer to complete your activity and send it back one more time. So, and like Oliver said, when you go through the activity log and the document that uh, details each one of the activities, you will have a very clear idea what, what is the criteria for each activity. So I suggest that you go to PMD Pro Plus, download the activity log and its guidance. It's a two different PDFs with the same number of pages and take a look at it. It's really not difficult, it's really straightforward. Um, Siddiq, you said that to just uh, um, join a little bit late, uh, um, no problem, we will be sending the recording of this webinar uh, to all uh, resisted participants, and uh, I also suggest that you go to PMD Pro Plus and download the activity log and its guidance and, and take a look at it. Okay, and for extra guidance, uh, the perfect place would be DPRO Plus. It, it, we have a community on there. Uh, we have things like forums and messaging boards. And um, so if you have a question and you're unclear, then you can also always make use of those resources. Um, can you mention US dollar 50 only if it is applicable for all participants? So have there any options for PM for just partners staff? Unfortunately, no. If you resist directly to PM for NGOs, that's the fee. And, uh, and just to be really transparent with you guys, this fee is basically to provide, uh, uh, to make us able to hire a consultant and provide you the feedback and assess the document. So you know that the exams at PM for NGOs are always designed to be affordable and accessible. And that's the same thing we are doing with the practitioner. The only difference is the practitioner is not a system. It is actually a person who will be uh, checking and confirming and giving you, providing you feedback and, and provide you some guidance, not a mentoring, but a guidance during the process. So unfortunately, there is no discount for uh, PM for NGOs partners. Yes, Abdullah, the activity log uh, is available at the PMD Pro Plus for anyone who is already a foundation. Really, really interesting questions, right, Oliver? I really, I really like the, the, the questions and the interest that uh, everyone is, is showing to the, to the particular examination. And, and, and in the end, again, we are willing to create a space, a platform for everyone to, you know, learn from each other and continue learning. This is something that we've heard from the candidates for the past 10 years. They finish the, the, the foundation exam and say, well, now what? What should I do? Where can I go to get more information, to get more knowledge, to learn a little bit more, to continue learning? to contact other people, to connect with other people. So that's the, the main idea behind the practitioner is uh, uh, allowing you to do all of those, to connect with other practitioners as well, to learn together uh, and uh, to give it back. So this, is, this idea are coming actually from your own requests and suggestions. Well, there were some really great questions there um, and I really enjoyed uh, answering those questions and, and hopefully um, everyone has enjoyed the presentation and uh, it's now really clear about what the process for the uh, DPRO practitioner um, exam is. Uh, my advice to anybody who has not already registered on DPRO Plus would be to do so. That would certainly be the first step 
And even if you don't intend to take the practitioner qualification, then um, the DPRO Plus provides uh, resources uh, and support to, to all found foundation uh, level holders. Before we, send, we say goodbye, Oliver, um, there was a question about languages in uh, um, a few, few moments ago. So right now the activity log is in English only, but we, we will accept if you fill it out in your own language. And we are working to translate the activity log itself and its guidance to all five core languages. You don't have to wait. If, you, if your English is, is good enough to understand the questions and the guidance, but you prefer to write uh, 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 your activities in your language, that's okay. Remembering that uh, we uh, accept uh, the language that are uh, the core ones at PM for NGOs. Uh, but let's say that you speak a completely different language, it's not one of the five ones, talk to us. If there is a demand, if there is a, a, a it, it, we, the language is an area that we really would like to be supportive. So just talk to us. If it's English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Arabic, or Chinese, you are already good to go on writing and filling it out with your own language. If it's another language, please talk to us. Uh, we want to support making it uh, easier and accessible for more people. Um, and we will translate the activity log and its instructions to those six languages um, anytime soon. And I would like just to say goodbye for now, pass it over to Oliver for the, the final comments. And thank you so much for attending this webinar. It was amazing to have uh, all of you here. Yes, thank you, Edson. I, I really enjoyed the session. I, I really enjoyed uh, reading and, and responding to all of your questions. Um, uh, thanks, everybody, for attending the session. And uh, I hope you have a really great day. And uh, thank you for attending. Goodbye.